So what can we do to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease or hopefully prevent it? Um, uh, so there are two uh, main uh, lifestyle modifications that have actually been shown to help uh, reduce the development of uh, symptoms of Alzheimer's disease or slow down the progression of existing symptoms. And those two are not uh, surprising, uh, things that we uh, recommend frequently as doctors, um, which are uh, physical exercise and a healthy diet. So for uh, exercise, we've seen that aerobic exercise in particular is, is helpful uh, in either preventing or slowing the progression of existing cognitive symptoms. Uh, and in particular, uh, we've seen that if you exercise at least 30 minutes at a time, at least three to four times a week, uh, that can uh, be helpful as opposed to uh, either uh, um, not exercising at all or even doing stretching or, or uh, other uh, not as active uh, aerobic uh, forms of exercise. Uh, in terms of diet, uh, we've seen that a Mediterranean style diet uh, as a whole uh, is uh, the type of diet that is associated with better outcomes. Uh, and uh, so uh, that diet consists of eating uh, more fish, less red meat, some chicken, uh, a lot of fruit and vegetables, olive oil, uh, nuts, uh, complex grains. Um, and uh, again, it, it's the diet as a whole as opposed to the individual ingredients because some of these individual ingredients uh, have been uh, uh, tested and not, have not necessarily shown uh, uh, benefit whereas the whole diet has shown benefit in terms of reducing uh, the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease symptoms, uh, and also some similar diets that are modifications of the Mediterranean uh, diet. So uh, another important uh, uh, area to target is uh, controlling cardiovascular risk factors. Uh, and uh, by that, I, I'm referring to uh, I'm taking care of elevated blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, diabetes, uh, things that we know can affect your heart and your brain uh, in terms of causing heart attacks or strokes, but what we've seen is also that there's a higher risk of dementia uh, that could be due to Alzheimer's disease or these vascular causes. Um, and, uh, and so if you, uh, as a whole, take care of those risk factors, we have seen uh, a better, better outcomes in terms of reducing the rate of development of uh, symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. And there have been a number of supplements that have been uh, tested thoroughly. Um, uh, and the, the success has been pretty limited. Uh, one particular supplement, uh, vitamin E, which is an antioxidant, has been in uh, a couple of large clinical trials uh, in individuals with dementia thought to be due to Alzheimer's disease. And those uh, individuals did actually benefit in terms of uh, a slowing of the progression of their decline in daily functioning. Um, uh, when they took vitamin E versus a placebo. Now the benefit was modest, uh, but it was there. Um, when vitamin E was tes tested for people with mild memory difficulties, not at the stage of dementia, actually showed no benefit. Uh, and it has not been tested thoroughly for prevention purposes with, in individuals without symptoms. Um, that is actually the strongest evidence we have with any supplement. Um, so uh, sleep is a, a, another intriguing uh, um, a factor here uh, for risk of Alzheimer's disease. What has been a newer development in our study of sleep in relation to Alzheimer's disease is that we've had more evidence lately that uh, individuals who have poor sleep uh, may in fact have more formation of amyloid in their brain, uh, which is certainly strongly associated with Alzheimer's disease and uh, uh, may be causative, um, uh, and that's uh, something that is still a question mark, but, but is strongly associated nonetheless. A lot of uh, the studies that focus on cognitively stimulating activities or computer programs have had a hard time proving that uh, there's a benefit beyond actually performing better on the particular computer program or, or activity. Uh, we want to see a benefit uh, translate to, to your daily life. And that's been more limited with those type of uh, uh, training uh, scenarios. Uh, we've had more uh, um, success uh, in kind of individualized, tailored, uh, cognitive training that uh, helps individuals compensate for their deficits where you're not, in fact, uh, improving cognition, but you're working around uh, the issues that you have. Uh, and, and that is a you know, common sense, practical approach. Uh, I think um, that is something that uh, we do um, you know, for some individuals. Uh, I think that if you're uh, cognitively very impaired, 
it's too challenging uh, for many folks, but if you have mild deficits, you may be in that sweet spot where you may in fact benefit from, from such routines. So uh, what, what can you do uh, to uh, uh, reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease, just to sum up? Uh, so common sense things, we want you to uh, exercise and eat healthy. Uh, we want you to take care of uh, you know, general medical comorbidities. Uh, but in fact, if you want to be more aggressive than that um, uh, and learn more uh, and uh, help us learn more uh, by participating in research, uh, you can come to the Center for Alzheimer Research and Treatment at Brigham Women's Hospital where we're conducting uh, both observational studies to learn about individuals uh, who are at risk for Alzheimer's disease and why, uh, as well as uh, treatment uh, studies uh, or trials where we try to either prevent Alzheimer's disease or treat uh, existing symptoms of Alzheimer's disease with uh, new interventions uh, that are not FDA approved yet.